Did you enjoy our silent movie last week? So I thought I'd put some sound and a bit of explanation on it this week. We're looking at these Ducellia switches. Now they're French, 1830. Not these, Ducellia, the company. Apparently they made um, lamps for carriages. Uh, candle lamps or something, anyway. Started off with them and then early 1900, 1910, I think, they started on electrical lamps for motor cars. So they've been around a long time. And obviously these are probably 60 odd years old, but these are lovely, aren't they? Anyway, enough of that. Look at, you know, what we're sort of doing with that job last week to explain it a bit. And here's the explanation. I always thought these were nice, these Ducellier switches. Lovely sound. They have an era when things are beautifully made. Even the plinth's nice, isn't it? The way that sort of lines up. But we want to have a look at them. So the first thing is to get them out of the housing. So to get them out of the housing, we need to push into a little pimple that goes in there. Which you see looks like that. So that will be in there like that and hooks into there and hold it in place. So we have to push that down to get them out. So we've got to push into that bit there, like that. And if we find the place, it should be fairly easy, we hope. That's it. There's one out. Lift that up enough to get to it so you can see where the, the hole is. Push down into it. And we should. There you go, pops out like that. And yeah, then that will come out. Let me see what we got. So to open them up, you undo that one there. So you take a note of which way they are, where they sit. And you get into here. Undo this one. It's only a few turns. You can see it top, tops out there. So that screws onto that bit there. Whoops, now I've dropped it. That screws onto there. Then we see our contacts. Which don't look too bad, but we'll need to clean up. You can see that locates into that bit. So on reassembly, you've got to do that and make sure it's all lined up. See, because it will move around a bit in there. So this is the first one I took apart. And you can see it's quite burnt on here on these connections. So we should be able to clean these up. What I do is I sort of descale them like this, and then we'll use a little brass brush to clean it out properly. But this will take the worst of it off. It's a bit better already, doesn't it? Yeah, so that's looking good. Now we want to clean these ones up as well, will not we? Which don't look too bad. We might take this apart just so we can see what goes on in there, what it actually looks like. Now to do that, we've got to push a little pin out through here. 
which will release all of this and the spring and so on. Then we can see how they operate. So there you go. That pin goes in there, you can see it. Being a little stubborn that one, let's try it from this side. It's moving. There you go. That's it, unhooks it. We can get all that cleaned up, can't we, in there? There's the pin. Lovely when these switches are proper mechanical, an old way of doing things. I mean, obviously with electronics now, it's all, you know, micro and it's amazing as well. I'm not, not, not belittling modern electronics, I'm just saying these are nice because they're old mechanical style of way of doing things. So you can unhook that from there. That's sort of the carrier. And this is the main feeder to the switch. It goes through here and to this bit, and then it contacts on the other bits. So it all relies on this all being nice and clean in here. Now we won't take that part any further. You can see that sits in there, that will seat down in there. But this will be enough for what we've got to do. So we we'll clean these contacts up and then we'll put it all back together in a minute. That's a bit better. Right, that seems happier, doesn't it? There we go, and then that one goes on there, doesn't it, like that? And that'll pop back in there like that, won't it? But I want to clean this up first. You can see how it sort of tips on here, which is part of what gives you that sort of springy action when you, you know, when you use it, which will make it feel like that. It sort of sits on this carrier here. Then we've got to push that back through the spring. So we've pushed it back in. We want to check that it's home enough. So we can just, just sort of like check it for the depth like that. There you go, it's thinned that far, isn't it? That side, this side, not in quite so far, so let's push it in a bit more. That's about right, that's all right. Okay. So yeah, so now we're assembling it onto there, aren't we? So that little pimple there is going to go down into that hole there, like that, you see? That bit. And obviously these rest on there. So what we've got to do, we've got to get that lined up to get the screw in there, haven't we? In there. See if I can get a light on that. Can you see it? Where it's got line up like that. And that little brass bit. I've got to start screwing there, haven't I? Right, there you go. Now we did take a note of which way those went, didn't we? <laughs> so I'll have to look back at the film and refer back to it. But that's why it pays to take photos as you're doing things. But here we go, we can sort of see how it operates. See? Let's 
Take and lie on that. It's a little bit better. That's what gives you this lovely sort of action into it. Okay, then we'll look at how they actually work the wiring in a minute. In a happy accident, I actually put this around the right way. Although you'll see in the film, I'll put it around the different way to how it was. But if we have a look at these little connections, Remember I was saying, look, we look back at, you know, keep an eye on it. That's where the iPhone's your friend, isn't it? Because you can see how things should go. Oh, let's get some light on this. Okay. So. Let me see what we got. So they're marked. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. You can see where the five is there. Well, depending on which way round you put that, it'll obscure it, won't it? You can see there's a witness mark of there where it used to be, can it? But yeah, you can see it lines up there. So if we put that that way round, which is the way the other switch come about, it begins to obscure it slightly. So I think that it goes that way round. And that lines up better with the witness mark and also it leaves the five, you know, so you can see it nicer. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's the way I'm going to do it. So they're both back together now. Unfortunately, you see this one's missing a bit of its baker light, broken off there. So that'd be the number one. But it won't matter. I mean, it, you know, this will this will assemble okay. So I don't think we need to worry too much about it. And they're quite often like that. Well, here you go. Here's a spare one, you see. This is um Fiat Dino one. They're also used, I think, in Lamborghini, but definitely Maserati use them, which is what these are out of. But in various models they'd use them. I think what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the functionality of it of how these wires connect up and what goes on. Because what you'll see is that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one are all separate. But you can see this has got a bridge link over to the other side. So when you connect those two together, it's gonna to put power to that one there, isn't it? Um, so when you connect that, those two, it's going to power this up. Do you see what I mean? There's nothing to connect to this. You can't put a connector on that. You know, you can't put a spade on there or anything, but you can on this one. So when you connect these two together, obviously it's connecting that to those two. So your live feed goes in there and then your output would be here. So you'll be outputting there when you connect them two together. Uh, it'll live up this bit to here, but of course that won't be connected to that one at that point. But when you connect that one to that one, you're also going to live this one up. So in our application, we're not going to use that one. We're just going to use these three because all we need to do, we need a power in and then a power out for either lifting or lowering the window or vice versa. But you can see, so, so we won't use that. But the original wiring, they do use it. And I'm not fully, you know, up to speed of how that works but that would be on the four wire motors that the earlier cars had we've now replaced them with two wire ones and we've also put relays in the system so we don't need that anymore but we'll have a proper look at that in a minute I'll do a little dry diagram yeah, it's a little illustration of how this all works so do you remember we got this so if you push it that way get some light on this 
push your switch that way it tips those connections down that way doesn't it like that there you see go the other way tips the other connections at the other end of the switch that way doesn't it so you can see it's two poles connecting together and it connects via this one doesn't it which we, we screw in don't we and fit so if we go over to the actual illustration what we've got is that so there's our live feed so that's going to be permanently live that one and then when we put a switch across so let's switch um, let's switch this so we put power to there that's connecting that one to that one which will give us a feed from there but it's also because you've got this bridge piece connecting that isn't it bringing that into contact so that that's permanently live you've switched it by connecting these two which is connected that to that and then it's living up to there but there's no takeoff of there there's nothing you can't plug anything onto there um, so it doesn't go anywhere so we disconnect it, we take the, undo the switch, don't we? Put it back to rest, which takes the feed away from there, there, and there. Now we bring this one in. So we bring that in there by switching it, which powers that up. What it also will do is it will send power down here, run it like that, and that, and that, which will then live that one up, that connector, that's connection there. Won't it? So it will be confusing if you're testing this with a test light and you're not looking carefully because you'll be thinking, well, that's coming live. Now come the other side of the switch is coming live. Well, that's why, isn't it? That's how it works. So when you take that out, disconnect that, that and that and that, all disconnect, and that's fine. Now, if you don't put anything on that connection, when you bring that into play there, obviously you're connecting those two, aren't you? The live going from there to there, that's inside the switch. Maybe I'll put one of these in there to show that's happening, won't I? Let's do that to show it's happening. So that's connecting that permanent live to that one, which is then you've got a wire connected to here, which is taken off there to raise or lower the windows, depending on which way around you've got it. So it's also livening up this connector here. But if you're not using that, that's not plugged into anything. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be live, but it's not actually going out of the switch anywhere because you haven't got a wire on it. So it pays not to connect it. Otherwise, you connect, you know, if you don't need it, which we don't for what we're doing. So when you take this connection away from here, there, you lose that connection, which stops that one working. So again, when you connect those two across, it means that those are connected, that live goes to that, and then the power comes off of there. Simple as that, he says. Well, it is though, isn't it? Um, so disconnect that, you lose your feed, you lose your feed there, and then that's it. So what we're doing, the system we're using, is we're just using the input of the switch, then output either way, to our relay system that we're using, which is what, you know, this is follow on from last week effectively, what we, what we filmed last week. Let's use the continuity tester to show in practice what we've just seen in my drawing. So we were looking at that one being our power in. So yeah, continuity test, doesn't it? Look, it tells us that, you know, when you connect it together, we get a buzzer. So if we're putting it down a wire to you know one end of the wire to see what's on the other end of the wire, it will it will do that when it connects, won't it? So you know if we if we pretend the LaRue is a wire, you see? So we know we've got continuity there, don't we? So you know, if we're sort of you know, there you go, like anything, it'll just tell us that one end's the other end, won't it? So it, it, as I say, it tells us what's connected. So if we put it on there, so that was our that's our ignition feed into the switch and then so you can, we know we know our continuity test is working you can hear the buzzing but if we go on to here nothing on there nothing there nothing 
there nothing if we trick the switch over so it's connected them together which was that thing I was on about wasn't it when it bridges them across so let's just get that to see so it's connected that to those isn't it but it's also as I said this bridge piece here it's obviously powering that up but there's not a connector on the end of there so you can't connect anything to it but then we go across the switch the other way switch it that way which is now going to connect that to that isn't it so there you go so is what I said but it's also going to connect that to there which again because it goes down that bridge piece to here to that connection there doesn't it so when you flick it that way you've got this one live and that one but not that one but when we go the other way we've got that live that live again but not this one but of course you know it's living this bit up so it's a bit weird that's what I was saying about how these switches work so you know you could confuse yourself but that's because of on use on the four wire motor which we're not using now we're using two wire motors so what I'm replacing in the car we've been working on is this lot now these are all a bit weird some weird sort of relay lots of wires in it and so on so we're getting rid of those because they were proving unreliable and we're going to a more reliable system so the reason being as I say to get rid of those basically and, and make it more reliable so we're going over to the system that McGrath Maserati use who gave me the diagram so this is their diagram how they do it so they, remember there's our switch that we were just looking at weren't we so we've got ignition live and then it triggers either relay doesn't it so if you go go this way you're bridging those two across and it's living that up but we're not using that we make sure we don't have that connected to anything so all it's doing is going across there going up to here to our relay then out to our motor and then that one's just becoming an earth and this is becoming alive then we flick it the other way bridges across there connects these two together but again we're not using that one so it doesn't matter so it's this one we're concerned about so we're bridging across there to connect that that goes up here goes into our relay and then goes to our motor which reverses the polarity of the motor which will make it go backwards which will allow the windows to go down or up depending which way you you know work in it but then this one becomes our earth so you can see there so what we're looking at is our 85 is our earth on that our 86 is our earth on that and then our 87a is earth on both of them so that's how we're switching them so we must make sure that we don't have that one connected because we don't want that anymore but obviously on the original system they would be using that which is why they had this slightly strange system because they were it's a different motor anyway and I don't want to get into that because I actually don't know <laughs> enough about that I've got to look into that before I can say more about it but it's not relevant to this job we're going over to the two wire motors which is what everyone's using and this is exactly the same on the Fiat Dino coupes because we use those switches don't we because those are out of a Fiat Dino coupe so it's the same thing you'd use this same same wiring setup same diagram would work in the same way on a Fiat Dino coupe as it will on a Mistral or a Ghibli or a Quattroporte or whatever else you're using so that's that so there we go enough of that so no more of the silent treatment I'm talking to you again not sulking but now I'm going home so I'll say goodnight <laughs>